answer some questions that some of you sent me. I've got my phone here with the questions, so you'll have to excuse me if I keep looking over here because I've got to read them. And um, one of them was from Lou Wise, and she said, how much material do you usually buy when not knowing what you will make at the time of buying? Well, I used to say three metres. And then I started watching Kittenish Behaviour, who always bought five metres. And I couldn't, I kept thinking, why is she buying five metres? And the thing is, it depends on if you want a full skirt. If you're planning, I look at the fabric and I think, what will I make from it? If I'm going to make a shirt, it'll be two metres. Um, I generally have an idea of what I'm going to make with it. I, uh, some material I think, well, I might make a dress with it. Some material I might, I might make a shirt. If I'm going to make a shirt, it's two metres. If it's going to be a dress that's not going to be a full circle dress or a very, very uh, wide dress, then I can get away with three metres. Generally, I buy, I've started buying five metres in some cases, if, it's a, if, if I've got an idea of a big full dress. But usually I get through about three to three and a half and it leaves me with just enough to make something like this, a little, a little top out of whatever scraps you have. Um, I often can get one garment and then a little bit of something else to go with it. On average, three metres. Three metres will get me a dress or a shirt and a, an extra metre where I can get a little top of it, out of it. But on the other occasion, if I've got something planned where I, in my head I can see a really full skirt, then I need five metres. Um, new creations. Now, you did tell me your name, but I can't remember. <laughs> I've got a memory like a sieve. She's a lovely looking lady. I don't know. I, the trouble is I can't make, I can't pop the pictures up to make them bigger. And she says, all that scrumptious fabric, do you make a muslin of your patterns before you use good fabric? And do you always wash it before you sew? Looking for advice on my sewing journey. Well done on your machine. This was regarding my Benina. Um, no, I have never made a, a, a muslin first. I'm reluctant to, but if I'm used, if I want, if I've got a plan for something to be made with lovely fabric, then I will choose some rubbish fabric that I've got first to make it. So this is not great fabric. And so I use this to make my first attempt at this t-shirt. I use it to make my first attempt at the shirt dress, um, knowing that I will wear it. I don't, I don't see the point of a muslin if you're not going to wear it. So... Because if it does turn out right, then you can wear it. If it doesn't, then if you use cheap fabric anyway, you will be able to wear it. Um, so I don't make a muslin and um, I just I just use the cheaper of my fabrics. And, and if it turns out nice or if I've made adjustments, then I will use the proper fabric for the second version. Sometimes I don't even get as far as the second version. If the first one turns out nice and I like it, and I think to myself, do I really want to make another one of this? It's lovely, but do I really want to make one? And do I want to waste that lovely material? So I put it to one side until I get the right pattern for the other material. And I've got a lot of fabric like that where I, I planned on doing something with it, and then I don't. Um, she also said, do you wash before you sew? You're going to hate me for this, but I never, ever, ever wash before I sew. I never have, I never can, and I, I, I never have. In all my sewing journey, I have never, ever washed before I'd sewed. Um, to be honest, I can't see the point of it. I've, and some people say, well, you don't know what, where it's been. You don't know what, what, you know, what, what treatment's been done to it. Well, when I used to buy fabrics in the 60s, 70s, we didn't know where it had been then and we and I never washed it and we never, it wasn't the policy, even when you went to dressmaking, it wasn't the policy to wash it. I did a fashion and design course where we made our own patterns and made our own clothes. We were never told to wash the fabric. I always felt that if you wash the fabric, you take the body out of it. And at least if I don't wash it, I'm going to get one wear out of the garment the where it's going to look nice. And then if it does wash and it goes all saggy and horrible, then at least I've had one wear out of it. And so, um, no, I never have. I, and I mean, a lot of you will bombard me with it down below. You'll probably say, why well, are you always doing that? You're silly. You don't know what chemicals are in them. Uh, yeah, I probably, but I've never suffered from any skin problems yet. And I'm 70. So, you know, um, and to be honest, 
My opinion is that when I press, I press with the steam iron. And pressing isn't going out, pressing is going like that. And you put steam on and the steam shrinks the fabric. And I've never ever made something and then washed it and worn it and found that it shrunk too much. Usually the garments are a little bit on the baggy side anyway, so I'm quite thankful when I wash them and they do shrink a little bit, although I've never noticed that ever. But if they do shrink, then they probably fit me better. So, no, I do not wash my fabric. And, and uh, you know, I mean, there's so many places now where you see in the shops. I haven't been in any shops where they've said, we recommend you wash your fabric. But um, I just don't... <sighs> When I buy my clothes, let, let's put it this way. When you buy your garments from a ready-made shop, Marks and Spencers or any places that are like that, they've used the fabric, the same fabric that you've made the clothes with. And do you go straight away and wash them? No. And if you did, you'd probably find that maybe they don't look as good as the first time you wear them. So I can't see the difference between me making the garment and... The person who's making clothes to for Marks and Spencers, for Primark, for all the others, not washing the fabric and selling it to you. And you're putting the same thing on. So I really can't see the point of that. Um, but that's my point of view. And you might disagree. You know, as I say, we all have our own point of view. Anyway, the next one was. This isn't a question, but it was a comment from Catherine Davis, who said about the mustard powder, she said it's an essential ingredient in vinaigrette to make oil and vinegar emulsify. I didn't know that, and I've never used mustard powder in my vinaigrette, and I'm a famous vinaigrette maker in our family. So I shall have to try some and see what it, look, what it, what it looks like or what it tastes like, see if it makes any difference. Penguin and Pear asked me the question, what's the best thing you get out of sewing? I would say that my the best thing that I get out of sewing is that I throw myself into my own little world. Most of, from what I've read, and I always thought I was, I was unique, most sewers are solitary people. They don't go out and mix very often. They tend to stay at home doing things. They're not party. A lot of, a lot of them aren't party people. And I found that um, on an evening uh, after we've had our evening meal, that's the time that he disappears upstairs and I disappear into my little, what do you call it? My um, fortress of solitude. And I go in there and I ask Google to tell me what the news is and then it and then I ask it to play some music or I then go and look at my iPad and watch vlogs and I just throw myself into this sewing and I'm making something. I'm creating and I'm in my own little world. I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. And I could be there from 7 o'clock through till 11 o'clock, just pottering on. And I think it's the pleasure of your own company. It's a pleasure of my own company. And having a little bit of something around it, you know, a little bit of music or a little bit of something else. And it, and on the odd occasion, <laughs> and it's the pleasure of, you know, having the husband out of the way and you can just do what you want to do. So it's very nice. And I can see why, uh, in a sense, why we need these little moments where you go off on your own and you create, you do what you want to do. So Claire from Penguin and Pear, my answer would be, just the the specialness of doing something in solitary. <laughs> um, I used to, when, when my kids were younger, I used to sew at the end of the dining table and, they, and it was an open plan room where they, they were watching TV and I'd be dipping into listening to the TV but doing my sewing. And sometimes time would get by time would fly past and I'd suddenly think oh golly I haven't done the tea I haven't made the meal oh golly I haven't put the kids need to go in the bath or the kids need to do this I have gone into my own little world getting away from all the all that's going on around you and in lockdown I didn't do so much in lockdown in the second one but I had since lockdown has finished I have gone in there and I've created and created and created I've been some creations but I've just enjoyed being in there on my own, making things, doing things, assembling things. It's just the pleasure of being on my own. 
think it was Sol Libra, but I can't find it. Sol Libra said, do you ever do woven fabrics? And I said, what do you mean by woven? Uh, do you mean denims or do you mean any kind of woven? Because this cotton is woven. And obviously it suddenly made me think, I've been doing an awful lot of stretch jerseys. And the reason why I do stretch jersey, there's a lot of people who say, oh, I don't do stretch jersey, is because it's so quick and easy to make. But also here in the UK, our weather is so changeable that um, I could get up on a morning and it could be it could be warm, and then by the middle of the day it gets too hot, and then by mid afternoon it starts to get cold. In fact, the other day it was like that. I put a very thin top on like this, and then it got really hot. No, I put a, a, a polyester top on, got really hot. So I then put a t-shirty cotton what top on. Uh, a cotton top on like this and then it got flipping freezing and the wind started blowing and it was coming from the north and I then had to go upstairs and change into a thicker polyester jer jersey type top so I do use jersey because a it's easy to make and b because it's slightly thicker and because of our changeable weather you can usually get away with wearing jersey but I also do, yes, do make cottons, woven stuff. I've, this is woven. I've made uh, the two dresses that I made. Well, one was polyester and the other one was cotton. Um, I do prefer to have wovens and I'm busy making some more woven uh, dresses. So uh, I have last year, over a year ago, I cut out and started making a jacket from some of that soup type fabric that I got from France. And it's half made, but it's kind of looking miserable. And I stopped. I got the I got the the front, the sleeves. They were raglan sleeves. I got the the jacket. I've got it all sewn up, but it's open at the front. And um, and there's just around round. It's all raw edge there and raw edge down here, and raw edged on the cuffs. And I, I was thinking, it's nice, but it doesn't have oomph in it. I want a bit of oomph. So I put it to one side and maybe I shall find the oomph to put in it, but I haven't I haven't decided what oomph I want to do with it. So yes, I and I uh, I do do that sort of thing. I don't like and it's it's sad to say this because it actually comes from the, our country. I don't like wool fabric. Um we have Shetland wool and we have Harris Tweed and we have, well, Tweed is from the, just on the borders of where I live. Um, you know, Tweeds and Wools don't appeal to me. And I think in the main, it's because when I was younger, my mother used to buy us um, Shetland wool jumpers. She loved them, but they used to irritate the back of my neck. I always found that wool irritates me and I'm scratching and scratching. So it's kind of left a bad a bad feeling about it. Harris Tweed makes lovely, lovely wheat tweeds, but I and I also think on me, if you're plump, put a tweed on top of you and you're plumper. You know, you're, you're even bigger. So I like to have things that are less bulky. So uh, no, I don't make anything in wool type things. I have in the past made a couple of coats when I was slimmer. But generally, no, I don't. I tend to avoid ha the Tweedy wools. Oh, yes, she is. Tend to avoid the Tweedy wools and uh, and Shetland wool type things. Julia Patterson said, "How did you get on with the prim hem gauge? It worked. It worked, Julia. The only there's only one problem that I have, and that is I am five foot one." So I'm not very tall and I was struggling once I had the, the, um, have you done? Can you see, can you see her? She's wanting her dinner. Can you see that little, look, that little girl there? She wants her dinner. Do you want your dinner? She wants her dinner. <laughs> Hi everybody, it is Wednesday and I am off to post my letters and um, my letters and parcels. It's flipping hot, we've had thunderstorms, we've had rain, we have had all sorts and now it is very hot and very clammy. Nowhere near as hot as you people in 
America and Canada seem to be experiencing. Uh, I don't know if I could cope with that, I really couldn't. It would, I would find it absolutely unbearable. Anyway, um, uh, what did I want to tell you? We have had a visit from his Lordship's son who went for a few days across to the Lake District and had a meal in a two-star or three-star Michelin restaurant and he showed us the bill. I couldn't believe it. They spent £750 on a meal. £750! I wouldn't spend that on a meal. <laughs> I must have more money than sense, that's all I can say. <laughs> anyway, um, what else did I want to tell you? The top that I'm wearing, you can't really see it here, but I'll show you it later on, is, um, it is a La Cala dress and I've got a black t-shirt underneath it. Um, I've made an awful lot of dresses and I haven't got around to showing you them. So I'm gonna have to, ha I'm gonna have to pull my finger out and do a little vlog to show you all the things that I've made. A couple of them, I'm not happy with, um, don't know that you'll see me wearing them, not for out, not for going out anywhere, unless I lose weight on one of them, and then on the other one, um, nah, I just didn't, it didn't, it was not for me. So, um, I'm going to finish off my question and answer here, well I'm not going to finish it off. I was busy doing a question and answer and then I found that I hadn't completed it and one of them was where, and I can't remember her name but I just mentioned it beforehand, asked me how I was getting on with the hem, um, with the thing for measuring the hem and it is very good but it has a couple of negative things about it. Easily corrected but slightly negative. So let me just drop my post off and I'll come and tell you all about it. Not be a minute. And I'm back. I just had to drop letters in, but um, in the letter box, which is just outside. But his lordship wanted some bananas, so I've gone and bought some bananas for him. Um, right. So, um, this hem gauge was, I really, I really like it, it's very good. Um, I'll have to show you how it works, but um, it's, the tubing isn't long enough. Now I'm only five foot one and I was struggling because the problem was the tubing is rigid, rigid and it's not, not, it's not long enough. And every time I was trying to turn, especially trying to do the back of me, the tubing was, uh, because it's rigid, I had to keep my hand fairly low to do it, and to puff the puffer, and um, it kept causing the, the gadget to move sideways every time I did it. And I was thinking, I need a more flexible hose for starters, and it needs to be longer. So I probably need to go to the DIY shop and buy about a metre of holes and that will probably resolve everything. But even then, I still managed to take the hem up and it was lovely. I got a nice even hem, which worked well. So, um, that was good. That was good. Now then, um, so what did anybody else ask me questions? Do you know, I can't remember what questions they asked me. Oh, someone asked me, and I'll put your name up there because I can't remember offhand. I'm lousy on names and numbers. She said, how did she, how did, how could you do, she wasn't sure how to set out a PDF that, for, that you download from the Carla. She told me what the number of the PDF was. It's a man shirt and it was a free pattern. So I have downloaded this free pattern because I thought it was rather nice. And I thought, right, I'm going to film the setting out of this PDF and I'm going to explain a bit about PDFs to you in one of the coming vlogs. I haven't forgotten 
all you lovely people who told me what your oldest tool was in your workroom. I just haven't got around to sorting it out, but I will do. I will get it sorted ASAP and uh, back home. So, I'm going to switch you off and I'll catch you later. It's me again. I was going to put the rest of that video in and it was missing. So I'm finishing it off here. Before I continue, I am wearing a Lacala top, a uh, Lacala dress that I made last year. It's got pockets. Um, I'll put a picture up because, let me see if I can turn it this way. You might be able to see what it looks like. It's long. It's got po pockets. See the sh reflection in there. <laughs> it's got pockets and I've got it. I make it quite long. It's down to mid calf for me. And on my feet, I am wearing, on my feet, I am wearing these, which are beige coloured trainers, which are all the fashion. And these ones, they need tying up actually, there. The fabric trainers, I like them because they... I have bunions and they shape around my feet a lot better. In here, I'm wearing some little socks that I got from through Instagram. And I must show you them because they're, they're Chinese socks and they're really, really cool. So, um, this is a Lakala dress that I've got. T-shirt, it's a bought T-shirt. Um, and the trainers I got last, in the first lockdown I got them. And I like them so much because they are so comfortable. And I thought they look quite nice with the, you could wear with dresses. I mean, the fashion is to wear trainers. A lot of people wear white ones. I would get white ones dirty in no time. So I figured that if I got this kind of color, then it would be better. I actually got them from, in a sale, the Principles trainers. They are from Principles, which was in Debenhams. And Debenhams have unfortunately either they're closing down or they're closed down now, but it's they were principal shoes. And I think I got them for about £15 a pair. I bought two pairs. I bought this colour and a grey pair, which is probably why they were reduced. And um, I love wearing both of them. Unfortunately, I've got a little bit of paint on the grey pair. I got the paint on the grey pair within about two weeks of wearing them when we were doing painting the fence outside and I foolishly didn't change my shoes got a little bit of grey paint of it's like a what do you call it a dark grey paint on it anyway it's the uh, create not creosote urban slate it was called and I got a bit of that on just a little dab of it but it was annoying so I tend to wear these beigey ones more often anyway the reason why I'm finishing this off is because I missed out a bit of the video I thought I'd recorded and when I came to uplisting it, it was gone. And I want to get this up ASAP because I'm lacking in videos for you. I should really get into a routine, a Friday and a Wednesday, a Friday and a Wednesday. Well, I've done the Friday one, but the Friday one ended up being Saturday. And I'd like to get this up today because it's Wednesday. So you were asking me, how did this one work? Remember that? The, the thing for measuring my hem. Well, it worked very well, but there was a problem. And the problem was that, if I get it out because some of you haven't seen it, it's a base, quite a heavy base, but it tends to move. When it's on the, on the surface, it tends to move a little bit. So when it's there and you're, do it, you're doing it and you're measuring, it tends to spin a little bit. It has the poles, which I've shown you, the little poles that come together like that with the measurements on there. I don't find that I need the measurements there, but that goes into, I'll wind that on there. I've got my pole like that there, and then onto that goes this. Now, I've since found that I was putting this on the wrong way. I was putting it on that way, and I should have been putting it on that way. And the reason being that the cable goes up there. Right, I have pinned some fabric to, the, to this dress that I've got on. And it is half and half. Now, I'm going to put that there. And I want the hem, 
I'm going to drop it down a bit because I like a long hem. Drop it down to about there. Is that right there? No, but let's do it a fraction higher so you can see. Right there. I want that to go there. So this here is quite high on me. I'm only 5'1", but if I was taller, then this would be way out the way. Let me tilt you a bit up just so you can see a bit better there. So what I do is I stand here and I squeeze and then I turn a little bit, bring the fabric up to here, go stand up straight, squeeze, turn a bit more, bring the fabric up to there, squeeze, turn a bit more, bring the fabric up, squeeze now I can't see whether I'm doing it properly or not but if I do it in a few places the problem that you a have you have a little bit is that you've got to be careful that you're not you're not tilting and going out because if you do that then you're going to get the wrong size but let me just see when you're done can you see where it goes I've got a, a, a gray line there and a gray line there chalk line the chalk line there's only two should be more there let's do it again let's go a bit more there i have to go right up to the to it when i puff it right there add a bit more now the thing is is yet you've got to be certain that you stand up straight so that is a bit of an issue but there you go can you see where my line is? So I get a rough idea of where I've got to turn it up. So that would be where I hem it. I would lay it out and then I would basically turn it just on that chalk line. Just on that chalk line like that and then I'd know it was all going to be more or less level if I turned it on that chalk line. I've got this folded over. It's actually a scarf that I've got here. So that's why you can see a double level. But I think that this is a bit too stiff, the, this pipe. So I think you could probably do with a, 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 a softer pipe. But I think it's fixed in there. Oh, is it fixed or not? It might not be. Let's have a look. Oh, no. So that comes off that little top there. So I could invest, if I wanted to, and it comes off that end i could invest in some thinner clearer more flexible um more flexible tubing or oh i've just realized what you could also do or if you're going to do it take this off boil the kettle or get some hot boiling hot water oh you, you can't do that oh well you have to do it without letting the water get into the tube but put that into the boiling hot water and then that will soften this and make it all it'll make get rid of the, the stiffness of it. You must keep the water out of the edges there. Once you've got it out and it's really hot, you're gonna to have to do some some uh, hemming straight away. Do your hem your measuring straight away. Put your put it back on one end on your puffer and on the other end on here. And once you've got that, it's gonna be nice and soft and flexible, and it would It'll be easier to manipulate. As I say, for me, it's not too bad. If I hold that there, I can do it like that. The hardest thing is when you get round there, you've got to puff, then turn and puff, turn and puff, turn and puff. And you've got to make sure that it's all up against the, 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 the dress is right against that bit. But it works. It really works. But yes, ladies, it works. So I highly recommend it. I think it's prim, this one. It's a prim one. And it wasn't overly expensive. £18, perhaps. I think it was about £18. Um, is there an easier way you could do that? I don't think so. Unless some of you... How do you... There's a question for you all. How do you take your hem up when you're on your own? How do you make sure that it's hanging and, and it's exactly right? I used to hang it up on like that. And then I'd, I would put it up here. Say this shirt dress. I would put it up on there. And then I'd measure from the waist to, to somewhere to there. 
or I'd get a rough idea of what length I wanted it to be. Yeah, this is actually a bit longer at the back, so it needs to be redone. But I would, um, I would either measure from the waist so many inches and then go laying on the floor and go round it all measuring the same distance or I would eyeball it I generally eyeball it now it would be nice to know how you ha when you have no assistance when there's nobody around and you want to take a hem up how do you take your hem up put your answers down below or if you want to email me email me because I, I, I get lots of lovely emails from you all I have had a one from D recently who lives in Canada and I know and also um I've just answered a one from God I can't remember your name. I've just I've just answered you two minutes ago. Put your name up there. Telling me it's been freaking awful the heat in Canada and um in USA. D was telling me that uh, apparently there's been one village almost completely wiped off out in Canada, but um, it's really, really hot. And I, and from what I've read, we go away on holiday in a few weeks' time, and I think we're going to get that lovely warm weather when we're on holiday, which I hope so, because I hope that it's going to be nice to take the kids to the beach. Anyway, so let me know how you take your hems up and put the note the messages down there or email me i really appreciate all your messages i appreciate everybody who writes to me and um to have a read of them and see we'll have you know it might be quite fun some of you give me some great answers it's really good i'm really grateful for all your answers and i'm grateful also because you watch my channel i love the fact that you enjoy it i love the fact that you find his lordship fine which by the way he's been <laughs> He has not been very well. He has been under the weather. His granddaughter had to isolate because COVID was in this class. At the same time, I had to go and look at... No, yes, his granddaughter had to isolate because there was COVID in, his, in her class. I had to go and look after my grandson because he had been told he had to isolate because there was COVID in his nursery. So I have been, we, we both went opposite ways last week. I was minding my grandson. He was minding his granddaughter. When he came back, oh no, I think it was even before he went, he was coughing and coughing and coughing. And he said, oh, I really, really, really feel bunged up. I've got a headache. And I said, well, it could be COVID or it could be because the symptoms for this new Indian variant, which apparently is running rife in the country, up where my son lives, where my grandson is, is absolutely rife. It's apparently the highest, highest reported area in the UK at the moment. And um, apparently the symptoms are very similar. They cough, a runny nose, a headache. Well, he had the whole lot. So we drove to uh, pick up these lateral tests, lateral floor tests, and he... he he didn't like me. He says, you've got to get the back of my mouth. And I'm going, right, I've got to. And I'm I'm standing there with a the stick going, yeah, get in, get in. <laughs> Touch the tonsils. And, and I can't stop laughing when, he, when I have to do things like that too. Anyway, it came out negative. So um, today, so he, anyway, he looked after his granddaughter for six days. She was isolated for six days. She had, she had to isolate for six days. But my grandson had to isolate for 10 days. Both were negative. Both of them had, didn't have COVID. Um, so anyway, his lordship tested negative on this lateral flow personal one that he did. So he says, well, I must be okay. We figured it must be hay fever, but he's never, ever suffered from hay fever before. At least he doesn't think he has. But he always has coughs and sniffs and whatever throughout the year. I usually suffer from hay fever at certain times of the year, but with mask, wearing my mask, I have to say, I've never felt healthier than ever. I've never coughed. I've never sneezed. My nose has not been running. I feel absolutely wonderful. So I've been, I find it's been a benefit wearing a mask. Anyway, I'm digressing again. What was I talking about? So um, he's, his son was coming to see him, us today. And I just told you in, when I, in the car, I told you about that. His son was coming to see us. And, uh, of course, his her, his partner, Lucy, is, um, oh, what did she call herself? She refused to have a vaccine, vaccination. 
a non-vaccine oh there was a term that you call herself anyway she refused to have a vaccine so we told her that he'd been having the snivels and things so we did another test and it came out negative again but we sat outside in the garden just to be safe for her and um she was an anti-vaxxer that's it she she said she was an anti-vaxxer which everybody has their own choice uh the only downside is that apparently the people who are suffering are the ones who aren't getting the vaccine so it could be, you know, a case of uh, if you don't get the vaccine, you've got to suffer the suffer the consequences. Anyway, so we sat outside. His lordship, before the kit arrived, he did another lateral flow test, and it was negative again. So he's so he's happy, but he's fed up with coughing. He, uh, you know, just so fed up. But I haven't got anything. I mean, I'm sleeping beside him. I'm pick, you know, I'm inhaling probably everything that he coughs out, and it's not affecting me. So don't know um so there you go ladies those were all questions now then if you would like to ask me any more questions put them down below or send me an email i think all my information is down below for ways to contact me put them down below send me an email or message me on instagram and ask me the question and i shall try to answer it in the next question time i'm gonna love you and i'm gonna leave you and i'll catch you next time Bye.